I love Bitcoin, but there's just something incredibly satisfying about having real, fine silver in your pocket. That's why commodity disks are so neat. They're one-ounce rounds of fine silver with a QR code on the back. Just grab your smartphone's QR reader, scan the coin, and you'll instantly get the silver spot price in Federal Reserve notes and Bitcoin. And if you donate a hundred bucks to the Scott Horton Show, he'll send you one. Learn more at Facebook.com/commoditydisks. Commoditydisks.com. All right, you guys, welcome back. I got Trevor Tim on the line. He is the uh, what you call it at the Freedom of the Press Foundation. He is the co-founder and the executive director of the Freedom of the Press Foundation. Greenwald, Ellsberg, Snowden, and uh, others sit on the board there uh, with him. And he writes for The Guardian. Did I already say that? Can you tell the difference between Bush and Obama on the Patriot Act is the last one? But, man, he writes all really great essays there uh, at The Guardian. Dot co dot uk or I guess it's just the guardian dot com now. Okay, fine. Welcome back to the show, Trevor. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me back. Uh, very happy to have you here. Is it really right that Rand Paul uh, successfully did a pseudo filibuster kind of thing and killed Section two fifteen of the Patriot Act? Or it's not I over mean, yet. It's not over yet. Uh, it will. We will know finally on Sunday what's going to happen. I mean, uh, the act officially expires on Monday, June first. And so that means that the Senate has until midnight on Sunday to pass something or not pass something. And they're not even going to be back in session until the like five o'clock. So they're going to have a few hours to debate these bills. They already debated last week and couldn't come to a decision on. I mean, Congress is obviously so dysfunctional that they can barely agree on naming post offices, post offices. So, you know, thank God uh, for gridlock. Yeah. At this point, it's finally coming back to help the American people in a sense that they can't agree to uh, renew the Patriot Act. They also can't agree on these watered-down reforms. So it's very possible on Monday the Patriot Act, at least Section 215, will have expired. Man, all right. And now is that's the only part of it that's up for sunset at this point? Well, there's two other parts that are up for sunset, uh, kind of minor clauses. Uh, there's called, something called the lone wolf provision. Uh, which has actually never been used, or at least the government claims it's never been used. And then there's uh, something called the, the roving wiretap provision, which essentially allows them to get a warrant for a person that has multiple devices that they're communicating on. But then again, that also has been reinterpreted in secret, uh, mm-hmm. as Marcy Wheeler wrote about the other day. So, uh, you know, it's certainly, you know, the, the idea that the, the sky is falling and that the government is never going to be able to actually track terrorists. Is, uh, you know, obviously absurd. They have, you know, half a dozen other legal authorities to conduct surveillance. Well, I'm not worried, worried about that. I'm worried to... about them having the ability to continue violating all our rights. Are they going to still right, have exactly. that? Exactly. It's just that they've been, you know, obviously in this, this last week, they've been, you know, trying to throw out all sorts of hypothetical scare scenarios uh, to, right. uh, you know, terrify people into thinking that they're actually losing something uh, if this bill expires, and they're actually not. Right. And, of course, um, the standard for uh, tapping any suspected agent of a foreign power, including any agent of a terrorist group, a foreign terrorist group, and I don't know, I, I must assume they've expanded this to, you know, so-called lone wolves, uh, proven somehow to be in contact with any foreign terrorist group as well, that the standard for tapping them under the FISA Act of 1978 is, uh, you know, I forget if it's just reasonable sus- suspicion or lower than that, but they're virtually never denied. And in fact, they even already had an emergency provision where they could tap you for 72 hours before bothering to get back to the judge about it. And that's how it already was before the Patriot Act was ever even passed. Am I wrong? No, you're exactly right. You know, this this idea that, like, the government was, uh, you know, had their hands tied behind their back before 9-11 uh, was always just crazy. You know, we there's tons of evidence showing the FBI knew of uh, some of the hijackers and some of the agents had tried to warn others and that there was bureaucratic infighting between the FBI and the CIA. Uh, and that's why they were, uh, you know, keeping data from each other. There was nothing... You know, there was nothing that they didn't ha- already have uh, that they needed uh, to stop attacks like this. 
And, you know, these laws are just an excuse. We know that when they, when they passed the Patriot Act, it was actually just, just laws that law enforcement had wanted to get passed for decades. But because they just weren't politically tenable, they couldn't. And so basically they got everything in their dreams uh, after 9-11 and have used, uh, by and large, uh, many provisions of the Patriot Act, you know, 99 percent of the time against, uh, you know, cases involving drugs and that, that have nothing to do with terrorism. Mm-hmm. And now, did I read right that the um, – I think it was Judge Napolitano's column. He said that uh, the inspector general had just came out and said uh, – of the Justice Department, I guess, maybe the NSA itself uh, – and said that, no, actually, they didn't get anything useful from this program the whole time. Yeah, this is the most amazing part of this whole past week is that the Justice Department released this incredibly timely, comprehensive report that, that concluded on the very first page – that Section 215 of the Patriot Act had had not produced any major case developments uh, in its existence, um, and that it, it actually isn't this tremendously vital tool that the administration has been saying for years. And yet, the media has basically ignored this report, again, from the Justice Department. This is an outside report. This is from the Justice Department's Inspector General, mm-hmm. who interviewed countless FBI agents and Justice Department officials uh, about the law. And uh, even though they concluded that it's not vital at all, that we don't really need it, that it basically just repeats information we already have, that, uh, you know, uh, that the sky will fall and, you know, hell will rain down upon us, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, next week when this law expires. And it's just it's just ridiculous. All right. Now, so uh, two more questions in very little time. Uh, the first one is, are they still going to be able to use uh, Section 702 of the FISA Amendments Act and Executive Order 12333 to violate our rights uh, to, to basically in the same way, in other words, uh, to go around uh, the cancellation of uh, this part of the Patriot Act? And then secondly, uh, is there a campaign somewhere that, that you can refer people to where uh, people are working, making phone calls, writing letters, sending faxes, doing whatever they can uh, to select members of Congress to make sure to keep uh, Patriot from being reauthorized and to keep USA Freedom from being passed? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the number one thing you got to do right now is call your senator because they are actually having this vote, and there are so many votes up for grabs. It's not like a one of these normal congressional votes where things are kind of decided in advance. They are panicking. And any support that they have from uh, the public will do a lot of good. Um, as far as if they can uh, do this again if the flock fires, uh, you know, they claim that they're not, that they have to shut down the program. Whether we believe them or not is, is one thing, but we have to remember the only reason that this was authorized by the FISA court to begin with was because they thought that Congress had somehow secretly authorized it. And so once Congress takes away its authority, Hopefully the FISA court will, too, and we already know it's been declared illegal in public court, and so there's no way that they can do this without breaking a whole host of other laws uh, that, that would be very hard to avoid getting prosecuted under. Right. All right. Well, thanks again for coming back on the show and for your uh, education on this very important subject. Uh, I think this is one of those where you got some swing votes, and, and the way it shakes out uh, with party breakdowns and stuff, this really could we could see a successful Sunday here if people get in gear. Not that I believe in politics too much, but this might work. Uh, thanks yeah. very much again, Trevor. No problem. Thanks for having me. That's the great Trevor Tim, everybody. He's at TheGuardian.com. Hey, I'll Scott Horton here. It's always safe to say that one should keep at least some of your savings in precious metals as a hedge against inflation. And if this economy ever does heat back up and the banks start expanding credit, rising prices could make metals a very profitable bet. Since 1977, Robertson Roberts Brokerage, Inc. has been helping people buy and sell gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. And they do it well. They're fast, reliable, and trusted for more than 35 years. And they take Bitcoin. Call Robertson Roberts at 1-800-874-9760 or stop by rrbi.co. Hey, you own a business? Maybe we should consider advertising on the show. See if we can make a little bit of money. My email address is scott at scotthorton.org.